Aloha. I'm Dr. Glenn Swartout, and I want to welcome you to a whole new way of understanding your health so you can finally take back control and safeguard your quality of life for a future that can hopefully be free of dependence on drugs and surgery. I don't know if you even believe in angels and prophecy, but I am compelled to. Apparently, I have had grand mal seizures at various times in my life, but that is not at all how I experienced it at the time. While my body was seizing, my spirit was having the most profound encounters of my entire life. While I was training to be a doctor, I participated in the EST training for my personal development. It was a Sunday morning and the streets of Manhattan were almost empty. I knew I was running a little late, but I really appreciated the trainer, so I stopped for a moment at a corner flower shop and decided to buy her a single long-stemmed yellow rose. Then an old woman with a walking stick for the blind was attempting to cross the street at that corner. So I helped her across and down the block to her destination, a building with a small foyer, a tall black doorman, and an elevator. As she was about to take the elevator, I decided to give her that yellow rose. Well, the next thing I remember is coming to on the sidewalk down that block and across the street, I still knew I was running late for the S training and that I would be grilled about being late until I took full responsibility before they'd even let me in the room. But I was being filled with a wave of immeasurable love and empathy, a literal spiritual tsunami that I could feel spreading out to encompass the entire planet. A sense of connection and appreciation for all the souls who are sharing the same moment here on earth, this womb of heaven. When I arrived at the training, I shared my remarkable experience with the gatekeepers, and they cleared me to enter without questioning my unusual story. On another day, exactly 20 years before 9-11, a schoolmate was showing me around a bird sanctuary on Long Island. The visitor center was closed, and there were no other cars or people there that day. Across the bay and above the tree line, the only part of the city you could see were the tops of the Twin Towers. After walking the trail along the shoreline, my friend needed to use the bathroom facility before driving on. I was waiting what seemed a long time in the hot parking lot. As I recall it, I decided to revisit the shoreline while I waited. I stepped over a log that was fallen diagonally from the forest down to the shore. Then I saw a very stylishly dressed woman with hat and scarf who directed my attention to the Twin Towers. She told me to remember when those towers were no longer visible from there. That would be an important sign. When I came to, lying on the pavement in the parking lot, I was so excited about having met this remarkable woman that I insisted on taking my friend down to the shore so she could meet her too. But at the shore, I could not find the fallen tree at all. I was very weak and had to lie down in the back of the car while my friend drove. But in my mind, I was just trying to focus on not forgetting the whole experience and especially the message. It was somehow more real and certainly more significant than anything in regular day-to-day -day life. Then while I was establishing my first professional practice in Tokyo, I was riding the subway with some friends. They tell me that my body was shaking on the floor of the subway car, but I didn't know what they were talking about. All I knew was that I was excited to tell them about the man I had just encountered. And I could not understand how they could not have seen him, too. After all, he was at least seven feet tall, a striking figure of a black man built like a pro basketball player on the Tokyo subway. It's not one easy to miss. He had asked me to raise my hands, palms up, underneath his. Somehow, this was not quite as easy as it sounded. He then told me that we could do good work together. He contemplated and then told me that I would marry a girl named Karen from Massachusetts. He said, there's more. He stopped for reflection, and then he said, but you're not ready for that yet. Well, two years later, 
I married a girl who lived in Massachusetts. Her spiritual name was Nandini, and otherwise she went by Aubrey, which was actually her middle name. Her given name that nobody used? Karen. And without her, I would not be doing the work I am doing. In fact, I would not have even survived to the age of 40. So I encourage you to trust that your angels are always at work and that there are indeed no accidents. As it is said, God draws straight with crooked lines. When you start applying the accelerated self-healing methods that saved my life and have turned around the health of thousands of other people, you can expect to turn back the clock on the underlying causes of unhealthy aging and degeneration by about one year on average for every month you work on this intensively. So if there is something that has been plaguing you for a decade, figure on working actively on healing it for at least a year or so. And realize that the underpinnings of that issue were accumulating long before you noticed your first symptom or received a diagnosis. For example, most cancers have to grow for about 10 years before they even get big enough to be diagnosed. And there are progressive stages of hyperplasia, dysplasia, and metaplasia that precede the cancer stage for many years as well. Most of the people we see who have been diagnosed with cancer are really in shock because they had thought they were the healthiest person around. They typically say they hadn't even caught the flu for 20 years. But what they didn't realize is that the symptoms of the flu are not produced by a virus, but by the immune system's response to a virus. So they had been too low on immune energy for all those years. And of course, our immunity is nature's cure for cancer. What we don't often think about prior to receiving a diagnosis is that there is a state in between wellness and disease. That is called susceptibility. One of the real beauties of this work is that you don't have to be sick in order to restore radiant well-being. You don't need a diagnosis or even a symptom. Your body will tell us what it is trying to heal, what it needs to complete the job. Otherwise, those healing missions just never get finished. New stresses come in and the old incomplete repairs just get buried again and again, like kind of like fresh mail in a full inbox. The layers pile up and eventually all of that debris and damage start interfering with function and we categorize it as a disease. You see, a cancer cell is really a blind cell. It is so filled and surrounded with debris that it can't even tell where it is or what kind of cell it should be. That debris is really just made up of those layers of stored toxins and damage that you can potentially go back step by step and clean out and repair. That is called retracing. A researcher recently took some cancer cells that they normally inject into another animal to grow tumors to study. She wondered what would happen if she put those cancer cells in a perfectly clean, healthy connective tissue that was constantly washed clean and fed with nutrients. She found that the cancer cells never grew into tumors. In fact, in the 1920s, Otto Warburg found in his Nobel Prize winning research that cancer cells could even convert back to normal cells. What is success in healing? After all, all of our biological body suits will eventually die, unless you are like one of the two Old Testament prophets who were taken up to heaven in a whirlwind, which in science we could now call a Birkeland current. To me, success is defined by the healing and growth of the spirit, the conscious body, the soul. That part is immortal. It is precisely the composite of all that we can and will take with us. Let me tell you about two clients, a father and a daughter. She was a client first. She lived on the other side of Hawaii Island, also known as the Healing Island. Her father was dying of cancer. It had spread to many organs and he was already on morphine, unsuccessfully trying to control the pain. 
He had lived a very rough life, including alcoholism and smoking multiple packs of cigarettes every day. But when he boarded a flight in Boston to be with his daughter for his final months, he left all of that behind and never looked back. She put him on an intensive program of fresh, raw, organic juices similar to the Gerson program, and he also took whatever remedies showed up in his monthly biofield analysis, which we did remotely from Hilo. When he arrived, drugged up with morphine, he had been given three months to live. And given is really a funny word in that context, if you think about it, because how did the doctors know that, and where did they get the authority to give time to a patient? In reality, such a prognosis is simply a statistical guess of what will happen if you follow their advice. In many cases, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. In any case, by the time his three months were up, he was still dying of metastatic cancer, but he was actually completely off morphine and pain-free. He survived an extra three months living with his daughter, and what I consider a great sign of successful healing of his spirit, the day he passed, he knew it and asked his daughter and son-in-law to stay home from work to be with him. Who can even say what difference it may make to a soul to pass consciously saying goodbye to their loved ones rather than doped out and in pain? In the accelerated self-healing process, you are going to learn about terrain and regulation how you can succeed at cultivating a healthier terrain, how every disease can only thrive in a certain limited terrain, just like a Petri dish in the diagnostic lab. Viruses, bacteria, and fungi need very different growth media. How to read changes in your symptoms to understand your body's regulation and to know if you're actually getting better or worse. Learning these important lessons helped me save my own life and helped me turn many other lives around. I hope you will join us for this intensive program. We all face challenges in life, and those are our opportunities for growth. Facing your challenges calls on virtues like courage and perseverance. It is by facing the unique challenges your life brings you up against that you develop the unique spiritual gifts that make you irreplaceable. The challenge and the gift become fused as the two sides of the one coin that is your life story. The beauty of healing, the core underlying causes of our suffering, is that while we may overcome and relieve our suffering, we can never lose that gift. Now, where can you turn for a guiding light on your path to healing? Beekeepers are the longest lived profession, while the average doctor dies at age 57. And when the physicians go on strike, the death rate drops every time. Do you think that health insurance will really keep you well or help you heal? Americans are the most medicated people and very far from the healthiest. If our bodies are adapted through eons of time for survival in a natural environment, why would we think that synthetic toxins that never existed before would have a chance of helping us? A study on hypertension confirmed that doctors all agreed that their patients were healthier on drugs because their blood pressure numbers looked more like those of healthy people. In this rare study, however, the researchers also asked the patients themselves, their families, their acquaintances, and their pastors, if the patient seemed healthier to them. In fact, they all agreed as well, but they disagreed with the physician's assessment, as they all observed reduced energy, functionality, and quality of life. Why is treating disease important anyway? Is it more important to manage the symptoms of disease like high blood pressure than to optimize the quality of life? When I was 28 years old, I gave up my health insurance so I could invest in restoring my health. A few years earlier, I had learned that I would likely go blind by age 50 if I didn't find and heal the underlying causes of my glaucoma. In the process of learning and applying every natural health system I could find, I came across European biological medicine. 
My mentor, the head of the Board of Trustees for the Naturopathic School in Toronto, Canada, found that I would not even survive my 30s if I didn't make some drastic changes. As I was learning to do German diagnostic electroacupuncture, I practiced the techniques on myself and my own family. Then I encountered a patient whose vision in her left eye was not improving with light frequency therapy the way I expected. I thought maybe this new test could provide some insight since it is how I learned that I was toxic with mercury and not able to excrete it, which is why I suspected it, but it didn't show up in a hair trace mineral analysis. To my surprise, her Vega test showed a reaction to a sample of an invasive breast cancer tissue resonating with her left side. Since she was young and had never been examined for anything like that, she chose to rule it out. In fact, she was diagnosed with that exact condition, but still at a small size and asymptomatic. Her first two doctors both wanted to do radical mastectomies. I encouraged her to continue seeking opinions, and the third doctor did a lumpectomy and some relatively non-invasive treatments, putting her in remission, and I was able to attend her wedding several years later. I have worked with thousands of other people since then. Years later, when I was at the naturopathic school in Portland, Oregon, I was traveling through the Berkshires in western Massachusetts testing clients. There was a most unusual snowstorm with huge snowflakes rapidly piling up over a foot deep. And at the same time, there was an insane intensity of lightning. A woman had driven there through the snow all the way from Cape Cod. When I went to test her, the electricity in the air made it impossible to get any kind of readings. A lot like the one time that I tested my father and could only find a reaction to electromagnetic stress. And it turned out he had turned on an electric blanket the night before. Imagine trying to run something as sensitive as a lie detector in the middle of a lightning barrage. I knew I could do a surrogate test on myself using Dr. Omura's patented muscle test, but I had never actually done it for a client as the sound of the instrument and the movement of the meter made it clear to them how the test was working. Using my body as the sensor, only I could tell what was happening. But the testing process turned out to be so much faster and easier that I have been using it ever since. By now, it amounts to many millions of tests, and to this day, I continue to confirm 100% accuracy by following up with measurements of the impedance of the meridians when I am testing a client in person. Over the last few years, we have also added several other testing systems we can use for our remote clients, and we have also progressed to making all of our own excipient-free botanical nutritional formulations, which has accelerated our results tremendously. My books and courses and formulations now reach many more people beyond our consulting clients. I have heard from many people who implemented the information in my books and turned around their blinding eye diseases. I have had the opportunity to work with stars and with royalty. I've had top athletes rave about my remedies. My mission now is to reach out and share this message of hope for our healing potential. I'm now 64 and I'm not blind. I'm not dead. I overcame the odds and I believe that you may be ready to create some healing miracles in your life too. That's what I live for every day. To hear that your degenerative condition is now showing signs of improvement. It even begins to open the eyes of some of the doctors who see it, for those with eyes to see. Of course, many don't even want to see or know. One of our clients, a holistic practitioner, was told by her oncologist to go home and get her affairs in order. It was her second bout with leukemia, and this time nothing would work, he said. She was given three months to live. When she said she would try some alternative therapies, the doctor got mad and said he could prescribe chemo, but it wouldn't work, and nothing else would work either this time around. After three months, during which she worked with us very intensively, she went back to check on her blood status. She noticed that the doctor didn't even look at her and wouldn't come into the room. Instead, he sent a nurse in to give her her results. She was in complete remission. 
It's not that everyone heals perfectly or so dramatically, but that we can never prove that something cannot be healed. We can only try and find out what is possible. Now, lots of health challenges are minor in comparison, but when they affect you and your life and your comfort and your performance, that's a big deal. The reason healing is important is that it frees the soul to have more choice in life, to learn and grow and develop. So maybe you just have some annoying symptom like GERD or migraines or leaky gut or something, and you really would like to be able to relieve the symptoms in a way that doesn't actually make you sicker in the long run, right? Did you know, for example, that taking aspirin increases headaches in the future? Through learning from the wisdom of the body, we have developed easy, effective, natural solutions for many of those kinds of challenges, and our clients' needs are always inspiring us to create more solutions. Plus, if you need more support with deeper analysis and empathic guidance that takes your body's own healing wisdom into account as the real doctor, the real healer, the real teacher, you've found us. That's what we do every day. A woman came in for testing at the onset of one of her severe three-day bouts with migraine that would keep her hospitalized and bedridden. We had her lie down on the floor with the lights off while we tested her, including finding the exact remedies that would balance the impedance of all her meridians. To her own surprise, when the biofield balancing test was complete, she stood right up and asked incredulously if it was possible that the test alone could have made her migraine go away. Another client in New York was waiting for hours in the emergency room for her third surgery to unblock her small intestine. While she waited, she had contacted us in Hawaii for a remote test. The test in itself is a process of balancing the body's energy field with natural stimuli. Fortunately, we completed the test before it was her turn for surgery because once the test was done, her bowel blockage cleared. She no longer needed to go under the knife or even the more dangerous general anesthesia. There have been so many remarkable experiences in accelerated self-healing. One man came to me unable to open his jaw. He was having to eat everything through a straw. He was familiar with German diagnostic electroacupuncture technologies and insisted that I test him with the instrument, not with muscle testing. So I did. His biofield response patterns were quite healthy but showed a lot of psycho-emotional stress. The only remedy needed was a particular flower essence. He went home with that remedy, and by that evening, his jaw was back to normal. Then he brought in his eldest daughter, and I found out what one of his great stresses was. She was suffering from severe lupus from a very young age, and the medical treatments with steroids were wreaking havoc with her body on top of the disease process. She was even losing her vision to cataracts, which are one of the common side effects. We wound up working with her for many years, and she even regained some of her lost vision over that time, where typically the cataracts would have gotten worse with the continued use of steroids. She eventually died of parasites. The doctors didn't realize she had. The parasites took over her little body because of the iatrogenic or medically caused immunosuppression from pulsing very high doses of steroids while she was hospitalized. In other words, because the medical system assumed it was treating the right diagnosis, and the only diagnosis, by assumption, they just kept trying harder until they essentially caused her death. There was a study at Harvard that compared the diagnosis being treated while in their hospital to the actual disease identified histologically on autopsy after the patient died. Do you know how many people were being treated for a disease they actually had? At Harvard, about one in three. That's the same percentage that come out of the hospital with a new disease, one that they didn't have when they checked in. We have a monopoly system of medicine in America. It's called allopathic medicine. What does allopathic mean? It actually means new disease. In our minds, we make a diagnosis into a thing, an entity that has power over us. But a lot of that power is actually our own power, the power of the mind and spirit that we give over it to it by giving it our faith belief in that way. 
So when that young girl passed, the family, who are very devout, invited me to sleep in the room with her casket the night before her burial. She was a small girl, her age barely in double digits, and her development had been stunted and tortured by all the drug treatments. But her spirit came to me that night, and she was now radiant, fully grown, and her beauty was untouched by all of her suffering in life. I saw the same radiance of spirit that shone in her earliest photos as a toddler, before the onset of the disease. The mind wonders, how could I even recognize her with her looking so very different, like a 33-year-old woman in her saintly form? But the spirit knows the spirit directly and with certainty that surpasses the senses of our everyday life. One of the most unusual confirmations of the accuracy of remote testing came to me during her young life. She was going through some new symptoms at home many miles from my office, and her father and I were then running what became a seven-figure health and wellness company together. So he asked me to check in on her and see what remedies he could bring home to help her through whatever was happening. During the test, I came to a stress layer that I couldn't identify with any of the test files in my usual test sets. So I started pulling out boxes of samples looking for a clue that would help identify with the stress her body was experiencing. I went through hundreds of samples and finally found a box that had something in it that resonated. I scanned through the columns of ampules and finally found one that reacted. I read the label and began translating the German into English in my mind. I hesitated because it meant menstrual blood. It was a bit embarrassing to tell him because I knew that she was still a prepubescent child. So I couched my words carefully, explaining that even though it doesn't really make sense, it doesn't matter because it's simply resonating with the current stress pattern and we will just use it to identify what remedy her body can use right now. So he goes home with her remedy and as he gets to the front door, his wife cracks the door open to meet him and whispers so the other children don't hear that their daughter is spotting. In fact, it was the only day in her short life that she did. Each of us has a unique healing journey. We go through times of suffering. We face choices of how to respond to those challenges. Our symptoms are best understood not as an enemy to be silenced, but as messengers rich with meaning and feedback on our journey's progress. Do we listen to those cries for help and healing, or do we try to forget them or make them go away? How do you relate to your body's attempts to heal? Do you seek out solutions? Do you nurture yourself? Or do you try to ignore or run away from the discomfort? A suppressive drug may seem like a quick fix, but it is really anything but. It prolongs and deepens the suffering. Many drugs even destroy our capacity for empathy. That is, they destroy the ability of the soul to reach out and connect and feel for others. I think there is ultimately no greater suffering than truly being alone, even in the midst of a crowd. That is the definition of hell. We really are living in a kind of zombie apocalypse right now. Can you still see the life in some people's eyes? But how many? That is the Shen, the spirit that lives in the heart. Did you know that when slides are shown of danger, that the body reacts before the slide is selected by a random number generator? And did you know that the reaction of the body doesn't come first from the brain, but from the heart before that. There are more signals from the heart to the brain than from the brain to the heart. And time is not exactly what it seems to be. Retrocausality is a reality, not only at the level of the quantum, but at the level of the soul, which itself functions as a single quantum object. You are who you are becoming. You are more of yourself now than when you were younger, or when you were born, or when you were conceived. And the fullness of your spirit, yourself, is your future self. You are a transcendent being beyond the apparent separations of time and space. 
Think about what part of who you are you will take with you when you leave this body. The value of that is beyond counting, beyond money. And think also about the practical costs of illness. It is the greatest threat to financial security. For example, the cost of being blind is $26,000 a year, let alone what it's worth to keep our vision and our other functions, things like memory and mobility. Of course, it is easier to sacrifice our material wealth in reaction to loss, but how many of us have the foresight to invest in prevention, never even to know with any certainty what tragedies we have staved off? We must choose each day to live in gratitude for life's blessings, to fully invest in maintaining all the goodness and function with which we have been freely bestowed. It is easier to appreciate the value of that which has been lost, as our senses are only engaged by contrast. It is hard for a fish to be grateful for its clean, clear water. Vision is the function most people would least like to lose. Some blinding eye conditions have known risk factors that can often be modified. When I started researching into the nutritional underpinnings of these conditions, I found a wealth of information that had not been presented in my training, though I was the top student at the top university in the field. Other issues like retinitis pigmentosa are known as 100% genetic conditions, so many people, even doctors, think that means there can be no hope for healing. But there's a study of two identical twins, meaning they carry the same exact genes that code for this disease, where one of the twins went blind and the other never did. So obviously that means the, that epigenetics, the environment, the exposure to different factors, substances, energies, and signals in nature can make the difference between expression of the healthy genes of vision, which are expressed in all children with RP before they go blind, and the genes of RP that cause blindness. We worked with a woman in New Jersey who already had gone blind from RP. She found one of my books and contacted us. Her eye doctor had already told her not to make any more appointments because she was now blind. Over the course of about five months, she took our remedy program designed specifically for her and she also applied herself to improving her diet, losing about 50 pounds with coaching support from Ray. She reported that the black spots in her vision decreased, and for the first time since losing her vision, she could again tell which of her sons entered the room before they spoke. Imagine what may be possible one day when we can apply accelerated self-healing to children who carry the RP genes who still have full normal vision. Maybe they can grow up like the twin who didn't go blind. In some ways, though, the worst kind of blindness is spiritual blindness. That's when we can't see something, some truth or some potential, because we lack the necessary virtue, whether it be faith or fortitude or humility. We live in a time when it seems that too often the blind do lead the blind. I hope you will be open to visiting with our team and see how we can open your eyes to new possibilities in accelerated self-healing. It is certainly normal for most people, perhaps two out of three, to want to stay with their familiar discomfort, to suppress symptoms with drugs, and even to remove dysfunctional organs or replace them with artificial parts rather than seeking a way to heal themselves. But for the other one out of three, we just know that there must be a way. I believe firmly that we have that way, not just because of our experience, our systems, our remedies, all of which are essential, but because of the quintessential foundation on which all of that is built. You. We listen to your body, your mind, and your soul. Actually, it may sound like an ungrounded, unscientific statement, but it's not. We actually have developed our clinical theory of everything to help us and you understand the science that makes sense out of the spiritual reality of life. 
we care enough about truth to be willing to sacrifice many precious theories that are still widely held because they are built on false and unspoken assumptions or extrapolations that are beyond our ability to confirm. When we settle into what we actually do know, the picture of existence of who we are and why we are here begins to crystallize and give deep meaning to our suffering and great power to our healing. Right now, we are able to set aside some time to speak with you personally about your unique challenges and goals and how we can help you implement the strategies that we know will work so well. This one session is offered free to you at this time as our way to pay forward the many blessings we have received from this work. If we both find that this is a good fit, we can begin to formulate a plan for working together. After we have our call, we will be happy to email you our two-volume Encyclopedia of Natural Medicine, Materia Medica and Anima Medica. What's the saddest outcome I can recall right now? A man who's been inquiring over the last year but hasn't taken any action. He's desperate. He's going blind. It reminds me of another man who we did work with for some time. All of his brothers had gone blind. He was referred by his acupuncturist who was unable with his many wonderful healing modalities, including very advanced energy medicine devices, to get this elderly man's pulses to come up. It looked like he was dying. At the first test, he needed more material support than I have ever seen, dozens of supplements. But with that support, his pulses did finally start to improve. He made slow progress for about a year, but the sad part was that his wife and his doctor then convinced him to take a drug that was supposed to improve his memory. The protocol required stopping all other products, including supplements and herbs. As soon as he did that, he went blind, just like all his brothers. Now, the chances are that the reason you are here is that you are one of us, one of those rarer people who choose to take a stand and face the challenges God brings to you for your benefit ultimately of spiritual growth and development. My team and I have set aside time in the next 48 hours to be able to speak with you. We look forward to connecting now while we have space open to get you into our next program. Don't hesitate. Time is precious. It is opportunity. It is the space of possibility into which all miracles arrive. Set up your call now. You're worth it. Aloha.